All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, I am, hi, everybody, we're going to get started. I'm Anne Marie Slaughter. I am the president and CEO of New America. And I, I really love this conference because there, there's no ambiguity about what is going to happen. My notes say you will begin at 820. You will speak for five minutes. You will not ad lib. If this, is a, this is about the future of war, and we try to do it with military precision. So <laughs> uh, I do want to start, though, uh, first of all, by saying this is the fourth time uh, we've done this. Uh, and it, uh, I think, has, has really taken on a character uh, of its own, uh, a sense that uh, we have senior leaders from all branches of our armed forces. Uh, but we also value this conference as a chance not just to listen and hear, uh, but to engage and to ask tough questions, big questions, uh, and to look into the future. It's also special for New America because of our partnership uh, with Arizona State University. I am a, an Arizona State evangelist, an unabashed one. Uh, I think that Arizona State is reinventing what higher education looks like. Uh, and they call themselves the New American University, and we are New America. Uh, our Partnership around the future of war means we have a future of war center and classes and now actually a graduate degree uh, in global security that integrates a lot of the material uh, from this conference. Uh, the Future of War project uh, is led by Peter Bergen and Dan Rothenberg. Uh, they support uh, our fellows Greg Barker, Josh Geltzer, Asmat Khan, George Packer, Tom Ricks, Rosa Brooks, Dave Colcullen, and Doug Ollivant. Uh, that's a pretty great list. They are all Future of War fellows. Uh, and uh, I have to, I'm about to introduce Jim O'Brien, but I have to thank Michael Crow, the visionary president of Arizona State. So we've got a long day ahead of us. Uh, we will be looking at specific areas, the Middle East and North Korea, and broad uh, issue areas like cybersecurity and international law, all focused uh, on the future of war. It's now my pleasure to introduce Jim O'Brien, who makes things run at New, at, at New America, at uh, ASU and maybe at New America too. Uh, he's the Senior Vice President for University Affairs uh, at ASU, and for his sins, the Chief of Staff to Michael Crow. So, Jim O'Brien. <laughs> Thanks, Anne-Marie. Uh, I'm here today really on behalf of uh, President Crow um, uh, to um, welcome you and uh, thank you for, for, for being here. What I'd like to highlight or kind of reiterate from uh, Anne-Marie's comments are that uh, this uh, partnership uh, between ASU and New America, it pairs the most innovative university and the largest public university in the United States with uh, one of the leading think tanks in America. This is an experiment of a sort, and that is can you take a university and can you blend it with a think tank in ways that we'll see today with uh, this, this meeting, this conference, and in the uh, Center on the Future of War? And I, and I think now in year four, I think the answer is yes, and I think we can see the really very positive outcomes of that kind of experiment. Uh, one other thing I just wanted to uh, uh, focus on for a moment was the, the kind of the spirit of what we're doing here. And uh, I think, as many of you know, uh, Sir Lawrence Friedman uh, recently um, uh, brought forth his uh, new book, The Future of War, appropriately titled for this, uh, this conference. And in there, he opens the book with the story uh, in 1871, a fictional account uh, is published of the German invasion of England and the successful Ger uh, German defeat of the English in 1871. But this fictional account took England by storm and um, uh, it, set in, it set in motion really a whole series of uh, imaginings and discussions about war and the future of war. In that book, the main character uh, uh, thinks about the, the uh, loss 
uh, of the English to the Germans in this fictional account and says, we had plenty of warnings if we had only made use of them. The danger did not come on us unaware. It burst upon us suddenly, tis true, but its coming was foreshadowed plainly enough to open our eyes if we had not been willfully blind. And it's this concept of being willfully blind that I think is sort of interesting uh, uh, today in this, in, as, as we think about the future of war. And what I might add is at the university, we're, 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 uh, we're always trying to address this concept of, of being willfully blind. How do we not be willfully, bl willfully blind? How do we avoid that? What can we do? And so at ASU, well, we've taken a number of steps to do that at the university, and that is we form partnerships, like the partnership with New America. How do we reach out beyond the university to others as opposed to being trapped in our own mindset, in our own culture? So we work closely with New America. We work with the Mayo Clinic. We work with Starbucks. And so we try to find partnerships to help us avoid this, 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 this problem of being willfully blind. The uh, other thing that we do at the university, which I think will be present in the conference today, is we try to work on a transdisciplinary basis. How is it that uh, as we create knowledge and transmit knowledge, we do that in a way where we bring people together, we blend ideas together, we don't allow knowledge to be trapped in various silos. And so this blending of knowledge, this transdisciplinary basis is at the core of what ASU uh, is up to and, and what I think this event today is about. And finally, this notion of the envisioning of the future. And so we, we make a special effort, uh, like, like the, the book published in 1871, uh, uh, using fiction as a means of envisioning the future. Uh, we have, for example, a center on the science and imagination uh, uh, at, at uh, uh, ASU. And we use that as a means of envisioning the future using fiction and, and, and completely different techniques. So, more than anything today, ASU's participation in this conference is about how is it that we take those kind of techniques, we think about conflict and war, and we do everything um, uh, possible to avoid it, but uh, to also understand it. So appreciate you being here today. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a wonderful uh, opportunity for the university to uh, be uh, in D.C. and to be part of an event like this. And with that, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Peter Bergen and General McConville to the stage.